Write the equation of a third degree polynomial function with real coefficients that has zeros five and negative two i such that f of one equals 10. If the roots or zeros of a polynomial function are r sub one, r sub two, and so on, then a possible polynomial function is f of x equals a times the quantity x minus r sub one times the quantity x minus r sub two, and so on. We also need to be aware that complex roots or zeros always come in pairs in the form a plus or minus bi. So notice in our case, we are given the zero of negative two i, or if we want zero minus two i, and therefore zero plus two i, or just two i, is also a zero. So we actually know three of the zeros. We know they are x equals five, x equals negative two i, as well as x equals positive two i which means our polynomial function of degree three will be in the form of f of x equals a times the quantity x minus five times the quantity x minus negative two i times the quantity x minus two i. Well first let's simplify x minus negative two i to x plus two i. From here, we will multiply out the binomials. Once we do that, we will use the fact that f of one equals 10 to determine the value of a. And since multiplication is commutative, the order we multiply doesn't matter. Let's multiply these two binomials first. So we have a times the quantity x minus five, and then times this product. Multiplying, we have four products. x times x is x squared x times negative two i gives us minus two i x. And then we have two i times x, which gives us plus two i x. And then we have two i times negative two i, which gives us minus four i squared. And now we need to simplify. First notice out here we have opposites. Negative two i x plus two i x is zero. And since i squared is equal to negative one, here we have minus four times negative one minus negative four simplifies to a positive four plus four. So now we have a times the quantity x minus five times the quantity x squared plus four. Again, if needed, negative four i squared is equal to negative four times negative one, which is equal to positive four, giving us the plus four here. And now let's multiply these two binomials x times x squared is x cubed. x times four gives us plus four x. Negative five times x squared gives us minus five x squared. And negative five times positive four gives us minus 20. So now we have our function in this form. Let's go ahead and rewrite the terms in the parentheses in descending order. So we have f of x equals a times the quantity x cubed minus five x squared plus four x minus 20. From here, we will stop and find the value of a given that we know f of one is equal to 10. So we'll substitute one for x on the right side and we know it must equal 10. Performing the substitution, we have a times the quantity one cubed minus five times one squared plus four times one minus 20, which we know must equal the function value of 10. Now we'll go ahead and solve for a. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have one minus five, which is negative four, plus four, which is zero, minus 20, giving us a times negative 20 is equal to 10 which gives us negative 20a is equal to 10. Solving for a, we divide both sides by negative 20. Simplifying, we have a is equal to 10 divided by negative 20 that simplifies to negative 1 half. And now that we know the value of a, we substitute negative 1 half for a and then distribute to find the function we're looking for that satisfies the given condition. And let's do this on the next slide. The function we are looking for is f of x equals negative one half times the quantity x cubed 
minus 5x squared plus 4x minus 20. Last step is to distribute the 1 half. We have f of x equals negative 1 half x cubed. And then negative 1 half times negative 5x squared gives us positive 5 halves x squared, or plus 5 halves x squared. Negative 1 half times 4x is equal to negative 2x, giving us minus 2x. And then negative 1 half times negative 20 is equal to positive 10, giving us plus 10. So this is the function we are looking for that has zeros, 5, negative 2i, and positive 2i, and f of 1 is equal to 10. Let's take a look at this graphically. So again, here's the function that we just found. Notice there is only one x or horizontal intercept at x equals 5, which verifies the zero of 5. Because the two other roots are zeros of negative 2i and positive 2i are imaginary, they will not show on the graph as horizontal or x-intercepts. We were given the function value f of 1 equals 10, which corresponds to the point 1 comma 10, which is this point here on the graph. And if we look at the function that we found, notice if x is 0, the output is positive 10, which gives us the vertical or y-intercept of 0 comma 10. And then finally, the last thing we might want to recognize is that because the leading coefficient is negative, the end behavior to the left is f of x approaches positive infinity, and the end behavior to the right is f of x approaches negative infinity. So the graph does verify our function is correct. I hope you found this helpful.